Welcome to Sunny's, the car wash factory. In conjunction with this training video, please reference each component's owner's manual, available at sunnysdirect.com, before performing any installation, repair, or maintenance procedure. Each manual details specific requirements and settings necessary for the safe operation and maintenance of your car wash equipment. Hey, welcome to Sunny's, the car wash factory. We're going to talk about uh, preventative maintenance and operations of our top motor side washers. The one we have here to go over is our top motor SF50 side washer, which means it's 50 inches of brush material, so it can help wash SUVs, large vehicles, uh, rocket panels of those and the likes. It's got a little bit of a three degree angle taper on it. It's got tapered cloth in the bottom. It's got some long neoglide in the top, so it's gentle around the mirrors and antennas, but reaches far enough in to get the glass on the side of the vehicle. This one here we're gonna look at today is an electric version. At Sunny's, we know that there's a preference or sometimes a real need or a demand to save some power and add some more equipment. So we have designed our equipment to be universal. It can be set up to run with an electric motor as this one is today, or we take this motor off and we drop a hydraulic motor in and we're back to hydraulic. If you have hydraulic and you wanna add more and you want more, some more cleaning power and you don't have enough electricity, we can convert some hydraulic to electric and actually add some equipment. So it's really nice to do that way. Functionality of the brush is primarily the same. The arms, the pivots, the bearings, all of those are the same, whether it's electric or hydraulic. So we'll go through those first, and then we'll talk about speed control and the operation of the VFD drive that runs these electric motors. This brush here is set up as a top motor. That's what that means. The motors are above, not below. It has bearings on the front, two of them that are pivot uh, 360 degrees all the time, rotating the brush shaft. These brushes spin in the neighborhood from 70 to 85 RPMs, 90 RPMs on a real busy wash and they spin in a rotation that is against the vehicle travel. So if we're looking down at the top of this passenger side brush, this one here would be going counterclockwise. If we look at the top of the driver's side brush from the same position, it would be a clockwise rotation. Okay, and that's normal, that's standard on all side brushes. That's the way they're gonna run every time. Um, they wanna be running against the vehicle travel. These are actually opposite of a wraparound. Important feature for having a, a side brush like this here is that the wraparound is spinning with the vehicle travel, it does the front edge of the wheel well. It does the back side of the mirror, um, which is the glass area. A side brush like this here will clean the back side of the wheel well, the side surfaces, the back side of the mirror where the bugs get to rest and live, or maybe not live anymore, but rest, um, and all the way down the side of the vehicle in the back wheel well. Um, it's important to have two different rotations on your brush equipment um, so that you get the cleaning, all the, clean, all the surfaces on the side of a vehicle clean properly. These, these bearings, again, will be greased uh, weekly because they're rotational. And then on the back side here, we've got two pivotal bearings, and these pivotal bearings only move about 30 degrees. They go from where the, the brush rests to the widest vehicle position, and that's all they do. Because of that short motion, which is not good for a bearing, we've gone ahead and put in double tapered roller bearings. Uh, they're pillow block style. They've got two bearings in there on each one, and they're designed just for this here. Heavy load, low RPMs, low motion. The two bearings are gonna give us an extremely long life. In this design, ever since we built our grill brush and we play with our big top heavy brushes, we went to a stainless steel shaft set into this arm with a keyed collar and a set screw. And then we put the two bearings on here and just like our wraparound, two jack screws to hold it level and uh, two big slotted holes here so we can adjust the pivot and the camber of the bearing. If we want it to be heavy on the car, we can actually do that adjustment by pitching it forward or backwards. Um, we really want this to be level because this is just a, a side brush and we want it to last a long time, that's important. So this has been really engineered for long life, a big upgrade from what we had in the past. The bottom line here, we've got uh, water or soap to be put on here. This could be reclaimed water at the beginning of the tunnel. This could be fresh water at the end of the tunnel. It could have a little bit of soap and detergent added to it. We've got a nozzle coming right down here into the cloth. We've also got three nozzles coming in here from the side. They should be inspected daily to make sure they're not clogged, that they're getting good flow. Uh, they'll come on either when the conveyor runs if it's reclaimed or they'll come on just when the, the, the car gets to the vehicle to run and do its application. On the back side of this here, um, we'll get a chance, we'll take a look at it, and it's got a shock absorber. That shock absorber is what creates the tension. If I push it out, it comes home. And that adjusts our wash pressure on the side of the vehicle as it's going so it doesn't bounce. We don't want any bouncing on the car. And we can loosen up these brackets here, and we can bring this brush out a little closer to be a little bit heavier on the cars, on the small ones and the big trucks, or we can adjust it and slide it out and let it be a little bit lighter on the car. So we've got some adjustment to it to make it, to fine tune it to wash the majority of the vehicles that you wash in your location. This one here is outfitted with um, cloth and Neoglide, and this unit comes with two different size hubs. It comes with a 10-inch hub in the bottom and a 6-inch hub in the top, 
and it comes over here. We're running um, cloth on the bottom, Neoglide up top. It's C-channel design with external rod. Um, again, you want to inspect your cloth. When we get to spin this and look at the RPMs, you'll see a nice taper to the cloth because it's going to be just like a rocker brush at the bottom with a taper to go up under the rocker and the, and the, on the bottom of the wheel wells and then taper back up on the body of the car. And then the, the Neoglide here is a little bit longer than all that and a little longer on the top, shorter in the middle, so we get a, a nice taper to go out to get the side of the vehicles. When we run it and spin it, check for RPMs, we'll see it. To check for RPMs, real simple way to do it. We either raise up a piece of cloth like this here so we can count it as it spins. We tie a little bit of a tie wrap on it. We'll do that for you, and we'll be able to start this brush up, count the rotations. Um, we'll we usually count for um, 10 seconds, see how many rotations we are, multiply times six. And then we're looking again, like I said, for anywhere from 75 to 85 RPMs. We'll adjust our VFD to give us that range um, and that adjust the RPMs of that motor. Once we lock it in, we'll make a little notation on the VFD box to say this is our desired run, and we'll lock it in place. And then we'll be able to do that and check our other ones to make sure they work the same. All right, we sent Robert back to turn the brushes on. I've got my one piece of cloth raised. I'm going to use my stopwatch on my phone, and I'm going to press start. We're going to count for 10 seconds. And we're going to see how many revolutions we get. We'll multiply that times six. Again, we're looking for between 75 and 85. All righty. So I'm going to try to do this all by myself, even though I've got plenty of help here. Ready? OK. So I'm going to press start. <laughs> all right, ready? Yep. I'm going to press start now. I'm going to count this for 10 seconds. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. We got 12 revolutions in six, uh, in 10 seconds. So 12 times six will give us 72 RPMs. So we're not that far from where we want to be. So we're going to actually take that RPMs and we're going to have uh, uh, Robert go back in the back room and tell us how, what he's set at, what hertz he is. And we're going to actually take that up a little bit and we'll time it one more time and see if we can get to that 80 uh, to 85 range. So now Robert's gone back there and adjusted it to, to what we think might be a good speed. He says it's 52 hertz, and we're going to time it again one more time to see where we come in and see if we can get close to that 80 range. Okay? Uh, Bubba, would you mind counting for me this time here? Because it's getting a little too fast for me. Ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Good. So 16 RPMs um, in 10 seconds times six will give us um, 60, 96 RPMs. So I think we're still a little bit too fast there at 52. So we're gonna bring it back down to 50 Hertz. Um, I think 50 Hertz will put us right about into that sweet spot in the, in the mid eighties. And uh, we'll wash some cars tomorrow with us here and see how that works out for them. Again, we're trying to match our brush speed to our conveyor speed. If they're going to settle in at 120, we might be right there. If they want to go faster, they may go faster. If they run it slower, they may actually even slow them down a little bit. But that's where we'll take them today, and that's the simple way to adjust to count your um, RPMs, revolutions per minute, uh, by doing it as uh, count for 10 seconds, multiply times six, makes it really easy. All right? And when the faster it gets, you may need a friend to do some counting for you. And the last step on this equipment, again, was talking about the, grease, the greasable bearings, the two rotational bearings that are on the shafts, again, Wipe them clean, two, two pumps, no problem. And again, we may have a bad grease fitting here. We may have to replace that. Um, let's see if that top one will take some grease. That one's no problem. Let's try this one here again. That looks okay. There we go. That one took two shots of grease. Again, greasing, wiping clean the fittings, greasing and wiping clean again is important. On the pivoting bearings, these ones here, as we talked about with the tape and roller bearings, they have two grease fittings. You don't need to grease them both. They're there for access points, depending on where the grease fitting's done. So you have to go to one of those grease fittings, um, put it on again, two pumps into each bearing, um, wipe them clean. Caps are there, the longer you can keep them, that'll, that'll always help. Again, top one. And again, two pumps of grease and a little wipe clean, and you're done for service. Again, the back ones would be monthly. Rotational buttons will be weekly. Make sure you do them. Extends the life. Much easier to pull that trigger twice a month 
than it is to change that bearing every six months. So take care of your greasing and the equipment will take care of your customers and give you a nice, happy performance. Thank you for watching this maintenance overview video. Please visit sunnysdirect.com and review the complete owner's manual before attempting any installation, maintenance, or repair of this component. There you'll learn necessary procedures, settings, and other considerations required for the safe operation of your car wash equipment.